Hi, I'm Dave Lang from ButcherMagazine.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to butcher a beef rump, also known as a top sirloin. In the US, it's known as a top sirloin. In Ireland, it's known as a sirloin steak piece. And in the UK, it's known as a beef rump. There are four main muscles, and I'm going to show you how to separate them in this video. This is where the rump is situated on the animal, towards the lower back. This is a beef rump, a full beef rump with all four muscles. The first thing we're going to do is take off the tri-tip, which is the piece on the left of your picture. You'll find the seam, which you'll see there at the silver skin, with the tip of your knife cut through the silver skin. Once you've got it, it's pretty easy to follow. When you get to the bottom, just slice all the way through and that removes your tri-tip. Now we're going to take away the silver skin. If you can see the knife as you can in this video here, it means you're not leaving any meat or very little meat on the silver skin. Just peel it away down towards the fat. Next item will be the mouse muscle, and I'm just catching the seam here. This is a fairly tough muscle, so what we won't consider it for our steaks. It uh, it's reasonably tender, but you need to take a lot of connective tissue off it. So we'll discard it for the moment. Any trimmings that we have, we can keep, which will be harvested at the end for ground beef for beef burgers for making stock. Then again, more silver skin, just get your knife underneath, pull it away, give yourself a handle, then pull it back towards you. But as I always say, sharp knives are dangerous, be careful. Remove excess fat. Now we're going to separate the rump part from the rump cap. And if you peel it back, you'll see the seam opening up. It's pretty simple. All you really need to do is touch it with the tip of your knife. Cut through the fat. Pull it back. Then you can see it wide open there. Run your knife along. Don't cut through any meat, just tr cut through the membranes. And you've got the rump cap, also known as picania, and you've now got the rump heart on the block. Trim off any excess fat. That arrow is pointing to the seam which separates the rump heart muscles. One is known as the bistro steak, which is a smaller one at the bottom there. And the bigger one is known as the prime sirloin steak. So find the seam. You've got to match it up with the one at the back. It's hard to find. So just a little bit gently along there till you find the silver skin. You'll start to see the silver skin appearing there. Run your knife down along it. And when you found the seam, just follow that with the knife to complete the cut. And that piece is known as the bistro steak, or it's also known as rump medallion when it's cut into steaks. Now remove the rest of the silver skin. Again, knife underneath, move it along. Slice back, 
That's pretty tough, pretty dense, so it needs to go. Leave that behind and ruin your stakes. And that's your premium rum muscle. Now, using a bigger knife, a steak knife, or a butcher's steak knife, actually, we're going to take off the first steak, which contains a fair amount of connective tissue and gristle. You can see it there. Then, about three quarters of an inch, or the, your, whatever thickness you prefer, depending on your taste, I'm going about three quarters of an inch on those. I'm leaving a little bit of fat on because I find it useful. Uh, it makes the steak juicy. Finish cutting your steaks about three quarters of an inch. This is a reasonably fresh beef rump. That's why it's so quite soft. And if it was hanging for maybe 21 days, which would be ideal, it would actually be firmer. But I have to work with what I have, and I happen to have a reasonably fresh beef rump. By the way, it was quite chewy when I cooked it, but um, I don't mind it chewy. The flavor is amazing. This is your tri-tip, and the grain in the tri-tip runs in two directions. You can see it there and there. Uh, that's a nice little roast. Needs a bit of trimming. You need to take off the silver skin. Uh, you need to take off some of the fat on the back. And not so much the fat as the connective tissue. That's the bit that's connected to the skin, so that can be quite rough. But that's a nice little roast. But you've got to remember the direction of the grain but it's pretty obvious on the tri-tip and this is the bistro muscle and what we're going to do is we're going to cut beef sorry rump medallions this looks very like fillet steak or tenderloin i like to leave a little bit of fat but then i'm partial to the fat i like the flavor i like what it does Again, about three quarters of an inch, you can go bigger, you can go smaller, whatever you prefer. Now, tray up your beef medallions, just to make a bit of room on the block. You don't want to be cutting what's already there. Move your trim, and then take your pecania or your rump cap. Now, I did a previous video on butchermagazine.com. You can look it up. And uh, I had a few comments from people who said that I was cutting it the wrong way. I was cutting it across the grain, and they're saying I should cut it with the grain. So in this one, I'm gonna cut it with the grain. Very popular uh, in Brazil. And you might have to ask your local butcher, if you have a local butcher, to get this for you, but not everybody uses it. Taking off this heavy silver skin, that makes it quite tough. Again, try and come as tight to the silver skin as possible. Leave the fat cap on the back. That really adds to it. So, the grain is running from the bottom of the screen to the top. The way I did it before was 90 degrees to that, but I'm doing it with the grain. And um, this would have been the way we did it back, God, when I started. I won't tell you how many years that is. P 
purists will say that there's only really three decent stakes because you have to look for the three veins in the rund cap. But you know what? Rules are made to be broken. And I've used them all, all of the stakes, and I've found them tender. So I don't see an issue. Now I'm going to harvest any usable meat from the trimmings. Take off any grizzle, take any, off any excess fat. You can use it for a burger, you can use it for ground beef, you could use it for diced, for stewing, you could use it for kebabs. Um, some of it you could use for stir fry, but not so much. Mostly it would be ground beef or stew. We've got the four best muscles out of it. We've got our steaks. If you're keeping this for stew and beef, you need to take out the heavy fat. A little bit of grizzle in uh, stewing steak is not the end of the world, but I like it a little bit uh, clearer. As lean as possible, I don't like fat in stews or casseroles. I love it on a steak and I love it on a roast, but not in something that you boil. Take out that grizzle, save the pieces of meat, a bit of the grizzle. Right, we're fairly well through it there. There's not much left to pull out of that pile thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video if you don't mind uh, i'd be obliged if you would click subscribe on butcher magazine youtube look out for more videos from butcher magazine in the future